Hello everybody, I'm Sam Laughlin and welcome to another edition of Blue Oak Energy's Tech Talk Tuesday. Today I would like to cover SWIP basics. These are the items I will go over. So first thing, background. SWIP is an acronym for Stormwater Pollution Prevention Plant. These plans has, have evolved ever since the EPA's Clean Water Act passed in 1972. They are basically programs that outline how you are going to protect your surrounding environment during construction. Whether it be from pollutants, contaminants, sedimentation, erosion, or other. Requirements. A SWIP is required whenever you develop more than one acre of soil. So if you're developing a solar ground mount site and you're developing more than around 200 kilowatts, give or take, a SWIP is pretty much going to be required. The EPA enforced these policies unless a specific state has an agency that does it. For instance, California has the state and regional water quality control boards that enforce these policies and that have their own state-specific requirements. In California, you need to be what is called a Qualified SWIP Developer, or QSD, in order to create the plans, and you need to be what is called a Qualified SWIP Practitioner, or QSP, in order to implement them in the field. Contents. SWIPs end up being multiple hundred page documents. They have everything in them from project description, contact names, who's building it, what the receiving waters are, uh, all, all within the document. There is also full size erosion control plans within the SWIPs that outline and show all the measures you're going to install on site to protect the perimeter and to protect the site. Some examples of these measures are silt fences, straw rolls, gravel entrances, washout pits, etc. And these measures are oftentimes called BMPs or best management practices. SWIPs also show how to inspect, maintain, and potentially repair any BMPs if there is a need. Um, when the SWIP is finalized, it becomes a hard copy binder that ends up being on the construction site at all times during the construction schedule. Last thing, fines, penalties. A typical minimum fine for not abiding by the EPA's regulations is about twice as much as it would be if you were just to implement the plan in the first place. The bottom line is, it's a good idea to move forward whether it might not seem necessary all the time, it's just not worth risking it. So these are the basics I wanted to scratch the surface on today. I hope it was helpful. Thanks so much for watching.